This is the All Powers R1500. This is a portable, lightweight power station solar generator that has some pretty cool features. And this has been sent out by All Powers. It will no way affect my review. I'm gonna show you everything here, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't, and it will speak for itself. I have not signed any agreements that say I have to say anything in particular or promote the brand or even say anything positive at all. I get 100% free will on explaining all of this, as is with all of my videos. I cannot be paid to say things in particular, and I uh, have actually lost sponsorships from multiple companies because I've spoken my mind about units, because I think it's my responsibility to tell you guys if they're good or bad. So all of that ranting over, we got the R1500 here from All Powers, and let's go ahead and get right into it. This is a middle cap sized solar generator or power station. It has all the abilities that you would expect as far as UPS, solar rechargeability, wall rechargeability, portability, battery expandability, all of those things. And we're gonna go over those specs here to see if it works as advertised. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Hey guys, my name is Ben. This is the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. I really appreciate you being here and I want to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters. They get direct access to me and get any help they need with preparedness in general. Most of them message me about questions about solar setups. They'd be able to message me directly about this unit or any other unit that I've reviewed or that is on the market and get my two cents on it as well as get help figuring out what ways they can set it up for their own power needs. I've got special content that I'm working on just for my Patreon members. So if you'd like to be a contributor and help out the channel, you're welcome to go to patreon.com slash Minuteman Prep and become a contributor there. You get special access to me as well as that special content. Thanks guys. Let's go ahead and get on to the review. In the beginning of the video, I said not been paid or anything like that. That's absolutely true. No issues there. Ironically, All Powers is one of the companies where I had a negative review in the past and they still want me to review this unit. I think it's because they know I'm actually gonna show how it actually works. So I've not tested anything on this. I just pulled it out of the box and it comes with a 76% charge battery. Let's see what kind of outlets we got here. We've got 20 amp rated outputs. At least that's the style of plug. It is an 1800 watt inverter, which means it's capable of outputting up to 15 amps. Volts times amps equals watts. So 120 volts times 15 amps, 1800 watts. So even though they're 20 amp styled outlets, you wouldn't want to pull more than 15 amps or 1800 watts out of it. We have a DC cigarette lighter port rated to 12 amps. And then we have two USB-C, which are rated to 100 watts, and then two USB-A rated to 18 watts, as well as two 15 watt wireless charging pads right here on top, which is pretty cool. Obviously you can't see it, but there's actually a really smooth, soft, rubbery grip texture underneath here in the handles, and the handles are very deep. I'm surprised how deep those go. I'm gonna press here, this flips up. We have our wall charger, our AC reset, and an XT60 solar input right there. It's rated to 12 to 60 volts and 13 amps. On the back, we've got our sticker, serial number, basic specs, and then on the other side here, we have battery expansion ports. You can add up to two expansion batteries to this, and this is using a very common DC uh, touch safe connector right here. These connectors are really nice. The cables are really easy to work with. I don't have an expansion battery here, but I do have experience with those connectors. Let's go ahead and turn on the AC output. Easy enough. DC, very simple screen. I want to go ahead and connect a heater to it. See if it can run a heater. Let's see what it does with that. Just heard the fans kick on. So here's going to be your warranty information and all of the user manual stuff. It does have an app. You can see the QR code there for being able to connect to the app, expansion batteries, your fault codes, wall charging, all right there. So this little carry case, let's see what we get. As expected, we have a wall charger and an XT60 to MC4 adapter. Looks like about six feet long. One of the first things I usually like to check with these systems is their AC input. So we have, what, a 1200 watt, 1000 watt load? Okay, that's really interesting. So it's saying a thousand watts right now, but I know that this will generally pull about 1300 watts. So there definitely seems to be some sort of difference between the actual readout here and what's on the screen. I'm gonna go ahead and test the UPS function. I'm gonna plug in a wall charger and see if we can wall charge at the same time as outputting from AC. Sounds like the fan just kicked off in here. Now it's saying 1200 watts output, which tells me that we've got 1200 watts coming through here and going and running that directly. That would make sense why the inverter turned off because now it's bypassing the inverter 
running off of this AC power, running that directly. And then we have a surplus of 286 watts going into the battery and we are charging. Now, as part of the test, I'm running it off of my Blue Eddy AC500, and you can see right there, 1500 watts is the AC load out, which makes perfect sense as to why we've got 1500 watts load here. So the UPS function, as far as pass-through, looks like it's working properly. We're going to watch this little light right here as I unplug the AC source to see if it glitches at all switching from AC power to battery. Three, two, one. I didn't even notice it flicker. Did it flicker? Let's try that again. I just heard it click off the inverter. Now we've got 1200 watts output. So we should see the input here in a second. Oh, and it does show a timer here on the estimated runtime or recharge time. So right here it says recharge 45 minutes to get to a full battery. Let's go ahead and watch the light again. Three, two, one. Oh, there was a slight, slight flicker, but I've seen much worse. So the UPS function does definitely work. I don't know how fast the UPS function is. It could be less than 20 milliseconds. It says 15 milliseconds here in the user manual. So if that works for you guys, I don't know anyone that's actually running servers where they need to have something less than 30 milliseconds, but this is obviously doing that. It was really, really fast. So definitely a thumbs up on the UPS function. Let's go ahead and turn this off and now check the wall charging speed, just normal wall charging speed. So it looks like we're getting 467 watts to actually go in. And on the AC 500, it's saying 490 watts. So pretty close in output display between the two units, not exactly the same, that's perfectly fine. So I wanna connect a solar panel. I've got a 400 watt solar panel outside and I wanna connect it to this. It is 3.15 in the afternoon, so the sun is already just outside of solar peak hours. We'll see what kind of input we get. So we've got a 400 watt panel. Let's go ahead and get a voltage check. We're getting 37.4 volts, which is exactly what I would expect. And at full power, they do about 11 amps. There is a difference between the voltage you get when you test it like this, before it's under load, and then the voltage you get after load. Before load is called VOC, or voltage open circuit, and the other one's called VMP, which is voltage at max power. And the voltage is lower in VMP. I'm not expecting to get 400 watts right now. It is a pretty clear day, uh, but now it's 320, and so it's not going to be ideal solar peak hours. We're getting a little over 200 watts, which is what I would expect for this time of day. So that part is definitely good. The biggest issue that I have with charge controllers that have a 60 volt input is there's no easy way to get 60 volt input that usually reaches the input rating of the charge controller. So this one is rated to 650 watts. And to get to 60 volts, let's say we connected three 200 watt solar panels. Well, each solar panel VOC is going to be doing 21 and something volts. We'll call it 21 volts for easy math. That means we're at 63 volts, which exceeds the 60 volt limit. So I can't connect that. And those panels at 21 volts VOC are gonna be doing about 10 amps when they're working. And the max input here is 13 amps. So then I'd have to finagle it where I do two panels in one group and then two panels in another group. And that puts my voltage at about 42 volts VOC, but then closer to 38 or 36 volts VMP. Because your voltage can't exceed the max MPPT input, but then once it starts working, the voltage lowers. So if you go based on the VMP, you may be able to make it work, but depending on how the charge controller works, you may fry the charge controller because you're initially putting in more than it can handle. I'm not gonna find out in this video the hard way if I put in over 60 volts what's going to happen, but that's the issue with voltage ratings like this on these charge controllers. All powers is not the only one that does this. Most power stations that are of this size have this exact same issue. It should be at least rated to 70 volts, so that way we can get 600 watts connected under 65 volts. And there's no way of knowing if this is the VMP rating or the VOC rating. So bottom line is you can't exceed the voltage and if you put in more amperage, that's okay, but it'll limit the amperage. So this is rated to 13 amps. So if we are putting in 36 volts at VMP level and then 13 amps, because with two panels here and two panels here, when those join together, that's called a parallel connection. And that's where your amps go up instead of your voltage. I know we're getting into the weeds here, but stick with me because we would be at about 36 volts and 13 amps because we can't get more than 13 amps in. That's 800 watts between four solar panels, but if we do 36 times 13, 
you'd only get 460 watts to go in due to the limitation of the charge controller. So it's always best to max out the voltage. There is a chance that with this one, you could connect three 200 watt solar panels and be below that 60 volt rating for VMP. So if we take that same math, let's just say it's 18.5 volts VMP times that by three, that put us at 55.5 volts. And if they're each putting in 10 amps, then we'd get around 555 watts. So realistically, it's probably closer to 11 amps as their input. That way we're closer to that uh, 600 watt mark. It just depends on the panel, it depends on the charge controller. That would be my first big gripe with this system so far, is not having a higher rated solar input. A battery of this size, which is 1,152 watt hours, that's gonna be able to charge very quickly from 650 watts of solar, but I don't see how we can actually reach 650 watts while staying within the charge parameter. That's my two cents on that. But it is lithium iron phosphate, which means it's going to last 3,500 cycles. So you're realistically looking at 10 to 20 years before the battery, you're worrying about any issues there. Uh, this is one thing that I've noticed, the screen does turn off. I prefer my screens to always stay on. That may be something that can be edited in the app. So all I do is just click the power button, then I can see we're getting our input here, everything's still good. Now, sometimes the weather isn't always great. You might be getting a little bit of solar input and you wanna be able to fast charge it off of a wall charger, but if the power is out, then you would need a gas generator. I really like using my solar battery setup as my first line of defense. And then if the weather's just totally crappy, then I have my gas generators as a backup to that. Because those will always run high output, but I won't always have gasoline or propane if it's a disastrous situation, whether it's a hurricane or EMP threat, something like that. If I can't get more fuel, I don't wanna be dependent on that fuel, but I could use it to supplement my solar battery setup here and there. So for that reason, I like to be able to charge off of solar and a wall charger at the same time. Let's see if this can do that. Our solar input's already in, we're at 189 currently. Plug in our AC input. Our input dropped down to 100. The UPS sign turned on. There we go, now it jumped. Mm. But we're only getting slightly more than what we were initially getting just using the wall charger. So it doesn't look like it's really doing anything with the solar input as well as the AC input. The reason I'd want this is, let's say I'm getting 200 watts from my solar panels. Well then with the wall charger, that puts me up to about 700 watts. That is really fast charging for a battery of this size because it's less than two hours. And it has the UPS function, which means I could be running something like a heater or a fridge, freezer, TV, Wi-Fi, whatever it is, and still be charging with a battery. I'm not seeing that working here. So unfortunately, it does not look like it will do DC input as well as AC input at the same time. Unplug the wall charger. Let's see what this drops down to. So maybe a cloud came over because we're only at 100 watts right now. But either way, we're seeing we're not getting this added to the original wall charging amount. So the R1500 has an 1800 watt pure sine wave inverter, a 1152 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, and 650 watts of solar input rated to 3,500 cycles with battery expandability. Those are some really, really good features. Overall, for a very portable system, it's probably about 35 pounds. Very easy to move around, good output. I'm gonna be able to use that very easily. But I'm concerned that it's not enough solar input for real use if you had the expansion batteries. If you maxed out the 650 watts input to the best of your ability, I could easily see that being a sustainable system long term, depending on your loads. A typical refrigerator will use about 150 watt hours for every hour that it's running, which means if I ran it for 10 hours, I would need 1,500 watt hours just to be able to get through that 10 hour period if I didn't have solar panels connected. So in that sense, for a typical refrigerator, unfortunately, this isn't enough battery to be able to run through a whole night. You would likely need to use either an outlet timer or unplug the refrigerator when you go to bed and then plug it back in in the morning because refrigerators do pretty well at holding their own cold temps inside. One feature I did just notice is even when the screen backlight is off, the screen is on. I can see that it says 76%, zero watts out, zero watts in, and I click the power button and we see 76, zero, and zero. I can see all of that information right here. And it looks like for the idle power consumption, if I were to leave this on just like this, it would run for eight days. So that is a really, really low idle power consumption. That's impressive. I like how easy things turn on and off. 
because a lot of times you have to press and hold these buttons and these are just a quick click. But as far as giving my recommendation for it, I don't know that I would give my full recommendation because of the solar input things we already talked about, as well as the battery size. If this had a 1500 watt hour battery in it, it would probably be the right one to go with. They do have bigger models and All Powers is fairly competitively priced. So I'll put a link down below the video if this is something that does interest you. You can go check it out on their website. I'm not selling these on my website or anything like that. And you can see the different models they have. They do have some really powerful ones. That's probably what I would opt for for my personal backup. But if you're gonna use this in like a van life setup where you're just running a DC fridge, maybe a Wi-Fi modem and laptop, some lights, maybe a 12 volt diesel heater or something like that. I could see this as a viable option, but even for a basic household setup, I don't think it's got enough battery and I would want more solar input just from my experience over the years, the more solar, the better. So I wanna thank All Powers for sending this out. Hopefully they'll watch this and, uh, and see these recommendations that I have and maybe make some changes there. I would definitely think with an expansion battery, it's gonna be a much better setup but you guys saw everything here live and you saw for yourselves just how well it works. So thank you so much for watching until the very end. I appreciate you being here. Be prepared, have backup power in whatever form that is. And if you want help with that, just visit poweredportablesolar.com and you can see different options there or click the link down to the All Powers website and check out what options they have there as well. Thanks guys, be prepared. See y'all in the next video.